we got to start with this, the 1968 Olympics. You have to explain how you got a silver medal, Yojiro Yutake got a gold medal, and you guys did not meet. So to set this up, Yujiro Yutake was a 1964 Olympic gold medalist, three-time NCAA champion for Oklahoma State, one of the all-time greats, went undefeated in college. You got a silver, he got a gold. Explain how you guys didn't meet at the Olympics. You know, it, it really was an, unu an unusual games or uh, pairing system that they had. Uh, Yutaki wrestled, uh, he won four matches. He had two ties and wins gold medal. Uh, I had five matches. I lost one and took silver. And I lost to the guy that took third. The guy that took third wins four matches, ties two, and takes bronze. He tied the gold medalist. He tied the guy that took fourth. It was the strangest pairing that could ever happen. Um, Yutaki really did not score a point in his last three matches. Not an activity point. They were all cautions. He, he tied, tied Russia. Russia was a five-time world champion. Ali Aliyev, he's, he's the Dan Gable of wrestling in Dagestan. In fact, there's even a huge statue of him over there. Uh, he tied him. He also tied uh, Talabib from Iran, two to two. No wrestling points. They were all passivity points. I lost to Iran, nine to eight. Now I was losing eight to one going into the third period. And my coach, Tommy Evans, coach at Oklahoma University, he says, well, this is what we trained for. And it was like, okay, I'd like to have something more, but that's, that's what he said to me. And I went, well, put it all out there. So I went after him and the score is nine to eight. I've got him down. I'm on top. I got a chicken wing on one side. It's tight. I mean, this thing is tight. I could have turned him with that, but instead I could see he had his other arm up. So I put in a half Nelson on the far side, which really, he's, he's, he's going over. I'm going to pin him now for sure, because it was so tight. And in the United States, it would have been legal. Any place else, it would have been legal. But as I stepped, I was on the chicken wing side. I stepped to the other side of him with the half Nelson, just deep as could be started taking him over and the referee taps me on the shoulder and says, stop, stop, illegal, stop, stop. So I stopped. Bobby Douglas said later, he says, never stop. Make them pull you off. Never stop. I, I, I wish I'd had that information sooner, but I, so I stopped. They get up and they're going to award him a point. And they looked at the Matt chairman he says, no, it's okay. They looked at the umpire, at the referee, and they says, no, it's okay. Okay, so the, so the, the mat referee says, um, Russell. And I just looked at the person, and I says, put the blank blank back down again and give me my move. Well, of course, they didn't, they didn't do that. There was only about 15 seconds left, and we're on our feet, and he's winning by one point. And he took about... 30 seconds to to clear up this situation and uh that was enough for him to catch a little breath and he ran the last 15 20 seconds and that was the match i lose nine to eight i had him i mean it was so deep so deep i could have even pinned lee pritz with it <laughs> so um you know and then we didn't really know that how the rest of it was going to fall out you know, um, you go about your matches and they go up through the next pairing and things like that. And, you know, that's just what it was. And uh, now I wrestled the same Iranian in the 69 World Championships and beat him. So I avenged my loss, but not my opportunity for gold. Are you, you, proud, of that? Really are, are you proud of that 1968 Olympic silver? Um, yes and no. Yes, I, I should be extremely happy. And, and, and over the years, I've learned to kind of like, yes, I'm happy with it. Uh, 
But the reason I wasn't too happy with it was not because of that match, because I did the best I could with what I had. And I knew that. Uh, there was a person who came to talk to our team just before we competition. And he's, he's trying to motivate, motivate us and say, if you have anything less than a gold medal, you're going to look down at that medal and you're going to say, this, this is terrible. You should be embarrassed. And I thought, I didn't think much about it. But as I'm getting my medal on the podium, I'm looking at it and I'm kind of, and this guy's mind came to thought and it, it's like, oh my gosh, does this really suck? Does this, is this bad? You know, and it was kind of like, I was angry. Um, I just came home and I put it in the drawer, which I do with all of my medals. I, I, I have some out and displayed, but for the most part, you know, displaying them doesn't mean much. And, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm accepted it. You know, it's, it, it is what it is. I have something that very few, very few people have. You can't buy one and mine isn't for sale. So I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm second best in the world in the Olympics. And, uh, I did speak with Yutaki at another time. Oh, this is probably 10 years ago at, a, at an event in Iowa. And uh, he says, oh, in his, in his broken English, he says, oh, Don Beam, I lucky, you not so lucky. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm going, let's do it right now. Right here in the parking lot, Yojo. But it is what it is. And uh, we've all moved on and, you know, in the whole scheme of things, it's, uh, it's important, but it really doesn't define who you are as a person or, you know, it defines some abilities and things like that. But there's so much more to life than trophies and medals.